acted like she was going to shout when I told her to have her Bible. So praise the Lord. So I realized there wasn't no sinners in that town. Now, I know you're, you're thinking you're judgmental. I guess I am. But I just thought that, you know, that that, you know, you know, you know what I thought. Uh, but, but I'll tell you what. You can't have it both ways. You can't love the world and love Jesus too. You say, oh, I can, I do. No, you don't. I'm going to get ready to prove to you in the Bible that you can't have it both ways. You can't be uh, a child of God and uh, and a child of the devil at the same time. And, and the Bible is really, really plain about it. It says that a fountain cannot bring forth both uh, bitter and sweet water at the same time. How many knows that's true? I mean, knows the concept of that. Is that not plain and simple as it can be? Now, I know, I know. Now, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. I know when you when a person gets saved, I, 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 I know by experience. A person gets saved, there's no way you, when you get saved, there's no way you are perfected. I mean, you get saved. I mean, as far as your heart, it's clean. When the blood of Christ cleanses you, it cleanses you from what? All sin. You're clean. But, you know, if you were like I were, never read the Bible, never really had asked the Lord how to live, you know, I uh, naturally there were things that, the habits and customs in my life that were contrary to God that I had to learn and the Spirit of God had to convict me and, and then, and there's times that they convicted you and, you, and you did it anyway, and then you got under conviction again. I, I went to the uh, theater, I think, after I got saved, and uh, I, I, I can really still remember it. I felt, I felt like a hound dog, and I, and it wasn't some old nasty movie. It was just the atmosphere, and uh, of course, I'm sure it wasn't too good. I remember going to a football game after I got saved. You said no way, yeah, I did. I went to a football game. And and uh, I uh, sat in there, and, and these two guys got in a fight over here. One of the red jerseys team had come over to the blue side, and I sat and sat down in front of them, saved, you know, praise the Lord. And they got in a big fight up here and cussed each other and stomped each other in the face. But I got to thinking, I ought not be here. And then I, I sat in there, and, and then uh, some relatives come over and was sitting right down below, waved at me, hello, how you doing? And this guy come up, was drinking too much, and he come up and sat down next to my relative's mother that was there with him, and he almost sat right on her lap. So, so the old relative of mine got up and beat him up, throw him out in the floor, and I said, you know, I will not be here. And you know, I never went back. That's it. That's the end of my ball game career. Didn't go back. The environment was not, not what I could do and stay, you know, pure in my heart. So I didn't go back. Huh? I went to one place one time. I don't know how I got off on this. I better read my message. But I went to one place one time. I just went to check it out, you know. I just thought, well, you know. I went to it, and I, I didn't realize. I got in there, and they was playing country music. Over the deal, because you do that in a restaurant, you got to just block that stuff out. How many? How many can just block that out when you go to a restaurant? You just got to block that out sometimes, because it's going to be there, and you done order this big old steak. You know, I ain't gonna leave that steak. I mean, I'm gonna get me a good doggy bag, or I'm gonna just block that out. It's hard sometimes. I remember one time I went in a restaurant with my buddy, and and that, they, an old song come on there, and my, my buddy had married a girl uh, from New York, and. Uh, she, she hooked up with a trucker and went back to New York. And, boy, I know, and he, he drank. He, 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 every Monday, just about, he didn't come out because he, he was drunk. But I remember we went to a restaurant to eat, and that old jukebox came on, and old George was singing, If it's drinking, don't kill me, her memory will. And I thought I was going to have to carry my old buddy out. And I said, now, you're going to have to, you can't, don't listen to that stuff. You can't listen to that. Huh? And I remember I went to this place, Brother Bob, and, Right off, the country music was going so loud, I thought, I don't know about this. It had been recommended it wasn't that bad. And then I went in there, and it, was, it, it wasn't that good. 
It was just, you know, it was out in the open air and all, but there was people dressed real bad. And so I said to myself, I better get out of here before somebody sees me. And then I, I heard somebody holler, Brother Randy! True story. I like to pass out. Seven or eight rows down. Somebody, I've never seen them in my life. I still never have seen them. It may have been an angel. But he run me out of there. I just said, I was trying to hide. They saw me. And I thought, you know, I didn't go back. I didn't go back. You ever been anywhere you didn't go back to? Huh? You have to live and learn sometimes, don't you? And I'll tell you, this world is full of sinfulness. But I'll tell you what, if your heart ain't right, uh, that stuff will get you, buddy. I'm telling you. You got to stay out of those places. You hear what I'm saying? I said, you got to stay out of that. You, you, and, you know, people are really pumped up for entertainment in this hour. You know, I mean, I've never seen the beat. Now, I'm, I'm cut a little different. It, you know, it takes, I'm not, it don't take much to entertain me. But people are really bent on entertaining themselves. And I think sometimes they cross the line. I think sometimes we cross the line trying to be entertained. Now, if, if, if your entertainment is going to cause you to do something to offend God or, or, or hurt your witness, then I think we ought to find another entertainment. Now, I better read a text or you'll think I'm just dreaming all this up. I want you to look in the 12th chapter of Matthew. And, and, and Christ has just been accused of being the devil because he cast devils out. Well, he cleared that up for him, and uh, uh, let them know, you know, a house divided, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And uh, he says, how can, verse 29, how can one enter in a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his goods. Now, how many understands that that the kingdom of the devil and Satan, and now Satan does get, he does take advantage of people's uh, weakness and vulnerability, and he inspires people. The devil is a spirit, and he inspires the spirit of man to do things that are contrary to God. And so, uh, but in order to shut him up, you need someone stronger than he is, and it's not you. How many remembers the seven sons of Sceva? Anybody remember the seven sons of Sceva? They went in and tried to cast the devil out, and the devil whipped them, took their clothes off of them, and run them off naked. And they said, Paul we know, and Jesus we know, but who are you? Now look, we are not capable of, of in ourselves, within ourselves, we are not capable of resisting and fighting and, and, uh, and overcoming the devil. We've got to have one in us that is stronger than the devil. Anybody know who he is? Whoa, come on now. And so uh, the Bible said, uh, here's, here's my text, it, verse 30. Listen to this real close. He that is not with me, he that is not with me, is against me. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me, he that gathereth not with me, scattereth abroad. Now, uh, that's my that's my text for the next fifteen minutes. Now, what does this mean? Now, there are a mentality. There's a mentality that you can just kind of sit on the fence. You really love the Lord, but you're not really committed. You're really not committed to be, amen, gathering with the Lord. But the Bible said, Jesus said, if you're not with me. Now, what does that mean? How many of us this morning think we know? Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit this morning. How many of us this morning think, feel like we know what it means to be with the Lord? You ever, Brother Bob, you ever be talking to somebody and they look and you say, are you with me? Are you with me? So have you ever heard me say that in church? Are you with? Come on, church. Are you with me here? 
What do you, what do you mean by, hey, you ever go to a church, holiness church and not be with it? Huh? On the friends, on the bubble. You know, we love people. This is a this is a not just a public place. This is God's house. Amen. And God welcomes people in his, in his house. You're welcome to come into God's house. Yes, you are. But I'm talking about being, amen, uh, with, with God. So when you leave here, you take him with you. Amen. Now, whoa, how many knows the term, are you on the same page with me? Now, oh, hallelujah. That's what Jesus was saying. Now, let me think just a minute. What? He did, the verse before that, he was just talking about having a stronger than the strong man in your life. Now, if you're here this morning, listen to me. If you're here this morning and the devil is taking advantage of you. Now, you're saying there's no one here like that. I guarantee you there is. If you're in here and the devil, and what do you mean by the devil taking advantage of you? Well, when he, he takes your weakness, and you know the flesh is weak. I mean, those the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He'll take that craving of the flesh, whatever that is, that natural craving of the flesh. And you know, since the fall of Adam, Brother Zane, our, our natural man leans toward evil. I didn't get a lot of amens back there. Did you see how quiet it is? You say, no. Well, how, how about you before you got saved? Did you lean toward doing good or bad? Huh? I'll tell you about me. I, uh, I, you take a little old kid, you put them in a bind. I'm telling you, you say, well, your kids was just heathens. They may have been, praise God, and they come by it natural. But I'll tell you this right now. You take a little old kid that gets in trouble, they'll lie like a dog. You say, not my kids. You're, you, he, they just lie too good for you to find out. Huh? <laughs> you don't like that, do you? Yeah, they'll lie. How many knows that little kids will lie? Huh? They will. Now, that's nothing to brag about. We've got to get that out of them. There's several ways to get it out. But the best way to get it out of them is to raise them in a way that they want to quit lying. You understand what I'm saying? That they're ashamed and convicted and, and feel not just beating the tar out of them, which, you know, that's, a mer- that's something that merits a little switching. But, you know, when they pray through and realize, amen, that that's not what Christ, that's not what being a good character, that's not what being right is all about. So they tell the truth. And God, get, come on now, and God, God gives them grace. How many knows that if they never get God in their heart, they'll never really quit? Oh, they may, they may change it, and it might be a little bigger, and it might just be on serious things like your taxes or, or the speeding ticket. You know you was doing 60 mile an hour? No. Liar, liar, paints on fire. Hallelujah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, stay with me now. Amen. But he said, look, you got to have a stronger than the strong man. Amen. When the devil moves in your life and takes control of your life and inspires and he's got the floor and he's doing all the talking, he's going to have you living a life that will bring reproach upon God. Come on now. And, then, and so the scripture changes there and he says, look, you, you've got to be with me. Now, what did he mean by being with me? Now, when Christ came, he came into a world that was a Roman world that was full of idolatry. Amen. They had all kinds of idols. They worshiped. They were perverted in a lot of ways. The Roman, the Roman Empire and the, and the Grecians and all of that, that period was filthy. I'm telling you, they were wicked and filthy. Amen. Christ came into a world. Uh, amen. And he preached purity and right living. He not only preached that a man couldn't have his brother's wife. Uh, amen. But he preached that a man looked on a woman to lust after her in his heart. He had committed adultery in his heart. Amen. Can you hear what I'm preaching? He preached a clean way of living. And then he said, you got to be with me on this. Uh, you can't stand against me on this. you got to be with me. Amen. And he said, if you're not with me, Amen. There's a lot of folks that try to take a neutral position. Amen. Come on now. Amen. And take a neutral position and, and just say, well, praise God. Uh, how many knows you cannot take a neutral position in the Lord? You have got to be like Joshua and say, uh, amen. As for me uh, and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's what the Lord was trying to tell him. He said, now look, you may think because you're not with me that you're not against me either, but I want to tell you something if you're not in this with your whole heart then you're really against me 
Oh, I wish I could preach to you this morning. Now, I want you to notice this. He that soweth not. Now, he that's not with me. Now, now listen. I, uh, my mom has lived for the Lord and tried to live for God ever since I, I was born. And, and she had, she had a, a witness in my life. But, you know, I found out that from the list a little boy getting introduced to Jesus on the cross in that story. I, I feel like I knew him about him. I knew what kind of character he was before I ever got saved. How many understands what I'm talking about? I, I knew, I don't know if it's just the training or living in the Bible Belt or, you know, just because, you know, I mean, when I was in school, they used to allow, they used to allow the old Baptist preacher out on the ridge to come out there and have class with us kids and sing and teach us Christian songs. They, they wouldn't do it now, but they did then. How many ever remembers that? Y'all, anybody here old like me? You remember them religious people coming? They'd come and give us Bibles and take a class about once a month. They'd take a class and teach us Christian songs and tell us about the Lord, tell us we ought to be saved. But I, there's a something about Christ that I, I knew, amen, I knew. But, you know, we've got a mentality today in the world. There is Christ in his life, and then there's me in my life. He died to save me. He he was pure and he's holy and he's the only one that ever was and ever could be. And now he he lives like that and he died so I could live like I want to and it can still go to heaven. How many knows that is not true? Amen. How many knows that he said because God is holy, then we ought to be holy too. He died, amen, because sin, the judgment is upon our lives that we are committing sin. If we are habitual sinners, if we, our lifestyle is sinning, uh, amen, then we're going to go where sinners go. Somebody say amen. You can't just say, well, I'm with the Lord. He said, no, amen, you, you, you can't be neutral ground. Come on now. You've got to take a stand. You, you have got to find out how Christ, uh, Amen. Lives and believes in his idea. How many knows the highest wisdom uh, is not what we can learn in a, in a, in theology. Uh, amen. But the highest wisdom uh, is knowing the mind of Christ uh, and knowing how he would act and respond uh, and his will toward a matter. Can you say that? Now, what transforms into a holy life? And notice what Jesus said. Now, I want you to understand this. He said, you're either with me or you are against me. There's no middle ground. And then he said this, if you don't sow with me, then you scatter abroad. Now I want you to think of that. If you don't sow with me, if you don't take this gospel seed, and you do not sow it in your own life, in the life of your children, and the life of those you come in contact with, you don't tell the truth, you don't live the truth, you don't believe the truth, you don't promote the gospel, then it's not just like you're standing there doing nothing. Well, I like to preach to somebody here this morning that is just sitting on the edge. You're not really with the program, and you're not really against, but you are. The Bible said if you're not with me, you're against me. And if you're not sowing, if you're not working, if you're not involved, you say, I'm not a preacher. I'm not talking about a preacher. Do you mean to tell me that you've got to be a preacher to sow the gospel seed? There's a lot of people not going to be saved. I think the greatest evangelism in the whole wide world, uh, amen, is personal evangelism uh, where you come to the house of God to worship and get empowered of the Holy Ghost and learn the Word of God uh, and then take that out there in the world, amen, and sow the seed, amen. You know, you know what it means to sow? You know what scatter abroad means? Uh, it means putting, uh, amen, it means hindering, uh, amen, it hindering. You're not only not with me, you are hindering what I'm doing. Oh, she has a preacher here today. Let me turn over here. Let's turn over here and read just again. I, I, I won't be much longer. But I, I, want, I want to understand. I think this is a critical problem. I think this is a critical problem in, a, in the church world today. A critical problem. Amen. People come that are not with Christ. They come, amen, that are not, praise God, sowing with you they're just church members you just you're just uh, people come i don't know how they do it i've never been to any other kind of church but when i was right you didn't take the right hand of fellowship and put your name on the book and all that huh i don't think that's a bit necessary i really don't 
You got to be born into this kingdom. Can you say amen? And then when you're born into the kingdom, listen to me. You've got a responsibility. Here's what he said. Let me, let me read it to you again. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gather, ga- gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Amen. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. If you're not doing something positive, listen, I want, I want to tell you this morning, God help me. We get up in the mornings in our lives. We have to have a mission and a purpose in our lives. We, it, we, you're not going to accidentally just slide into a spiritual life with God. You have got to be involved in the gathering. The Lord came, amen, to, to gather a people together to make, build a church. Uh, oh, help me preach a little bit. And he said, if you're not going to be part of that and part of what I'm doing, then you are going to be a hindrance to what I'm doing. There's no neutral ground. I read the story years ago. I've told it lots of times and probably hear lots of times. But to illustrate this, uh, the soldier that did not want to be part of the Civil War. He had he had favor with both sides. And he had relatives on both sides. So he wore both uniforms, thinking that he would be, uh, you know, his neutrality would keep him from being involved in either side. But the story says that when he came out on the battlefield dressed like that, he got shot from both sides. Neutrality does not work. Now, of course, I mentioned to you earlier about the, the, the well, the spring. And you know that's true. If there's a bad spring, it's not going to be both good and bad. There's no way. How many knows there, there's just no physical way that that can happen? Because the bitter water will taint the sweet water. And, and, and there's no, it, it, both waters can't come out of the same fountain. Now, we cannot consistently have a life that is both like the world and like a Christian at the same time. Huh? You say, but I really love the Lord. But the, Jesus said, if you love me, Keep my commandments. There is a love, a love, you know, if we say we love the Lord and be like the boy, I wrote that down in my Bible, be like the old boy that wrote his girlfriend that letter talking about how he'd swim the raging river, climb the highest mountain, and all these things that he'd do for her and how beautiful she was. And then he said, I'll, I, I love you with all my heart, and I'm going to come Friday to see you if it don't rain. If it don't. Now, did he really love her like he said he did? Can you see him swimming a raging river when he wouldn't get out in the rain to go see? Huh? That's the way we do. We come to church sometimes. I'm going to tell you something. You say, well, brother, you're just charismatic. I am not, whatever that is. But I'm going to tell you something. I've been here long enough. I've been in God's work long enough to know you just keep coming to church, sitting with your hands folded, watching the clock. Come late and leave early. Don't care what goes on, but you're doing your duty. You're feeling that old pew. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be on the outside looking in. You hear what I'm saying? If that becomes a consistent habit with you and you get nothing out of the house of God, amen, your allegiance is going to change. And then you're going to start finding stuff out there that, 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 that you like. And I'm going to tell you, and I know what I'm saying. But I've seen folks that leave God, and then it seems like they're so carried away with, you know, something out there. And standing where I'm at, I cannot see how they traded the power of the Holy Ghost, the peace of God, the love of God, the fellowship of the brethren for that. Now, they can't see it because I've sat them down and talked to them. And they just said, oh, y'all are just in bondage down there. Do you feel like you're in bondage? I feel like I'm in bondage. I feel like I'm free, free, free. 
you know what happens to people when they get like that? Amen. They, they, have, lost, they have lost the real thing in here. And, and they're confused. And the devil deceives them. You remember when old Esau came out of the woods a-hunting? And, and, you know, he was a hunter. But he said, I'm starved. I'm going to die. I've got to have, I have got to have something to eat. I'm going to die. How many thinks he was going to die? He just come out of the woods hunting. And he thought he was going to die. How many thought, thinks he would have died? Would he have died in 24 hours? 48? 40? Probably wouldn't have died in 40 days. Would he? Be honest with me. You know, he sold his birthright out for a bowl of beans. Now, beans are good. They're not that good. I don't care if they got thick soup, cornbread. They're not that good. You say, how could he do that? Are you sitting there now saying, how could that man do that? How about Jesus? How about those 30 pieces of silver? Son of God. Miracle worker. Sea walker. Blind man healer. Dead raiser. Sell him for 30 pieces of silver? How many of y'all said that's the dumbest thing I ever heard of? But you know, the, the fact of the matter is, you're either with him or you're against him. If you're not with him with your whole heart, he doesn't want half your heart. Hey, how would you like to be married to somebody says, I'll tell you what, amen, at, at the wedding, your, your wife or husband tells you, now look, I'm going to be faithful to you half the time. Is that all right? How many of y'all say, yeah, that'd be okay, half the time, that's fair. No way. What if they say, well, I'll tell you what, there's 365 days in a year, and, and I'm going to be faithful to you. Because I love you with all my heart. I'm going to be faithful to you except on my birthday. And then I'm going to go have a little flame. Oh, that's, man, one out of 365. That ain't no big deal. Go for it. How many do that? No way. I tell you, you'd bust them right in the nose. I mean, well, you know, the spiritual way, wouldn't you? Huh? How do you think the Lord says when you say, Lord, I'm going to serve you on Sundays, but come Monday, Ah, he ain't going to buy it. He ain't going to buy it no more than you are. He says, he ain't, you ain't going you ain't going to ride the fence. You ain't going to be. And the brother Bob Osmond used to go through that deal. I don't know. I probably can't remember it. But he, he says, he goes in that thing about being up, inish, out, and outish, in, uppish, down, downish, up, blackish, white, and whitish, black. He's talking about how there ain't no such thing as a, as a heavenly devil, worldly, worldly Christian. You know such thing. Hallelujah. How many is with me? Let's stand. God bless you. There's no.